Hello and welcome back to my mastering chat vlog thing. Still haven't considered a proper name for this. Maybe one day it'll be some famous thing and you can enjoy listening to the uh, original embryonic um, version or it will just be me talking at the camera uh, nonsensically, which is most likely the outcome. This one, I'm going to talk about these bad boys. This is a test pressing, one of the most misunderstood things within the entirety of the vinyl process. Now, just to be clear, I don't do vinyl mastering in the sense of cutting vinyl. I do what's called vinyl pre-mastering, but we most nowadays refer to that as the mastering. Um, the semantics are difficult to understand. So when you get the metal work done for a vinyl record, you then create the actual press. That's why it's called pressing, because you get two stampers and they go <laughs> on a little squadge of uh, PVC and that makes a record and it gets trimmed and then you put it on a record player and it plays music back. Now, a test pressing is a short run version of the records, usually like five to 15, sometimes more. Um, she's made using the stampers that they intend to use for the uh, final production run. But it's just a short version done on a small uh, press for you to just make sure everything is correct before you press go because you know pvc is expensive vinyl is hilariously expensive now and if you mess it up there's not really much you can do about it you lose hilarious amounts of money so test pressing is a fantastic way to make sure that you've, you've done everything right and they've done everything right so i'm going to cover my address just in case there's any weirdos out there now this is a test pressing this is a released record so i'm allowed to show you this um this is a uh, from GZ Media, who are a big, um, probably the biggest, I think, company for pressing vinyl. They are in Europe, at least, in the Czech Republic. And they uh, send every single record of a release. This is a 4LP uh, version um, of a record. This is the version which I've actually played. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, this is a uh, release on Laced Records. This is the Borderlands 2, one of my favourite computer games of all time. Probably in my top five. If you want to know my top five video games of all time, um, post in the comments. So there's all kinds of data on here. And we'll talk about that before we get the record out. First of all, what I've stuck on the front is this. I've stuck on uh, the catalogue number in my um, very bad handwriting. Title, the version, which is the 4LP version. Um, what have I put there? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I've just put the pressing plant as well. Um, TP1, first test pressing that I took out the package and then checked, which means that I've played it. So before I get onto anything else, I know which version of the test pressing it is. So if I need to pull it back out, which often happens if you're quality controlling something goes wrong, I've got that on there. All the other information on here is uh, catalogue information. I'm not going to show you that in any detail because I don't think it's bad to show, but it's also not public stuff. But that's just basically the internal stuff. Um, Key Production is the name of the company that pressed it, uh, or the, the brokers that, that uh, arranged the pressing, I should say. The brokers and plants, the differentiation is, is difficult to understand. I won't go into that now. Um, and here is just information about the release overall. So you get a piece of uh, paper that tells you the information stuff. And I put that in the first record of the release because that allows me to then know that that's the first one when I go and look through them. Anyway, the information on there is kind of, it means nothing really once it's been pressed. It's just information for the, the production side. So take that out of the sleeve, boring metadata out of the way. This is the test pressing guidance stuff uh, in, on the disco bag. Disco bag is a, it's, a, it's called a disco bag because it's a, usually for vinyl DJs, which is where you've got the record in the middle and you've got a cardboard slip um, and they send you in a, in a disco bag where they've printed 
the information on this is basically GZ's uh, troubleshooting stuff. Thank you again for the order. We really hope the way your record sounds. You like the way your record sounds. And we'll come on to that in a minute. The record itself then comes in a, a further PVC lined uh, inner sleeve. And here is the record. So all you've got is side A marked to know which one to start on. And then side B is the one that's blank. I've actually not stored this very well because it's warped slightly, but that's, by the by, that's just me being um, silly with how many test pressings I have in one place. So you get this, what the hell do you do with it? You, um, you play it is the first thing. And you make sure that the right stuff is on the right disc. That sounds um, overwhelmingly simple. But honestly, if you don't check this stuff, stuff can go wrong. So you make sure that side A is the right record. And you should have information in the inside here, which is the, called the dead wax. So after you've got your locked groove from the run out, you then have uh, something written. So this will say the uh, name of the release and it has the catalogue number and internal matrix numbers. That's just basically something for the plant to use. So you need to make sure that information is correct and what you expect. And sometimes people will write stuff in there and uh, you need to make sure that that's right. And that's a good way to know that you've got the right side of the record. When you listen to it, make sure it's pressed at the right speed, 45 or 33. You should have all this information in the spreadsheet already. And make sure that the track spacings and everything are as you expected. Normally what you'll do is you'll send one track for the entire side and they'll put these little lines here which are called VTMs, visual track markers, which is basically like a spaced out uh, groove. So it's like a, a little bit like at the end here, but like a little version of it. It basically leaves you a little bit of dead area to pop your needle down on if you want to play a certain track. That's most importantly for DJs really. But it's also, you know, if you want to play one track, Put it on your record player, you can see it and you can go to it. You'll then, before you listen, this is what I do, you do a visual check. So I have um, in my studio, I have a, a little platter that I put it on and I have some lights from different angles and I can then look at it and I can see that this is quite uh, dusty now because I've, obviously I've got it out and I've messed around with it. Normally you'd expect no dust really, apart from little maybe little tiny bits of paper, which you can wipe off with a brush before you listen if you're concerned. Um, and you're just checking to see there's no damage. This is absolutely clean. They've done a great job pressing this. There's no dirt inside the grooves. There's no non-fills, which is where it's not been pressed in properly. The temperature is not right. Again, I'm not going to go into the details of vinyl manufacturing because I'm not an expert, uh, but I know what to look for. So in this situation, I put it on, play it, I listen back. And I would look for anything beyond just little pops and clicks, which are expected. And if you have areas where it's crackling a lot, you can press stop, have a look at the disc and just see if it's a little bit of dust, wipe it off, go back, play it again. If you're getting pops and clicks and you're looking at the record and there's some sort of damage or there's a line or a scratch, this is why you get several test pressings. Because at that point you put the test pressing back in, you grab the next one, you write a note on the front of it and you crack on and you start the process again. If you get the issue again, you make a note of it, you change to the next test pressing, and if you get to the third test pressing and you're getting the same issue, you reject the test pressing. And you say, on all the records in this one area, I'm getting a problem, I've wiped it, it's not coming out. My cat just shouted at me, hello Daisy, are you all right? Yeah, she, I think she's all right. She's never really all right, this cat. She's a bit of a mangy beast, to be honest. So that's when you reply. And like I always say with stuff, you need to be clear, you need to be um, concise and give the best information back to the pressing plant. And the pressing plant will they be able to either do a recap or repress the test pressings or whatever you need to go from that point. I'm not gonna go into any more detail on the test pressing stuff because I'm not an expert. I refer you all to the uh, Making Vinyl Master Disc podcast and also the um, Women in Vinyl podcast is really good for this. 
They talk a lot about the manufacturing side as well as the mastering side. Anyway, test pressings, really stressful generally, um, but can be made easier if you follow a couple of guidelines which I've just laid out for you. Any questions, leave them in the comments, like or subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to go make sure there's not a problem with the cat because she's just shouting at me. Goodbye.